I did not feel like wearing a wig today. Mm -hmm. I thought we're talking about Nana. We're talking about punk rock. We're talking about characters, some of them that don't have hair either. I mean, have some hair now, but it's still, you know, see, it's not really like they're there. But I thought that, you know what, at some point you and I, we were destined to go to this level of knowing each other, you know? Listen, since I started doing fashion related videos, there has been one show slash manga, manga, that has been requested so many times that I cannot even count it, to be honest. I mean, I can, but it would take a while. I promised to do this video legit like a year ago, maybe. The thing is, I knew about Nana since I was like 14 or something like that. It was quite popular at the time. A lot of my friends were into it. But every time I had time to watch it, I was not in a mental state to do so because I knew that it was gonna be sad, apparently. Now I know it is. But back then I just knew that because of my friends and I was avoiding it, girl. I was avoiding it because I did not wanna be sad, okay? When you guys started requesting it, I was already not feeling well and I was already kind of sick. And then subsequently I got diagnosed with cancer and I was not in the mood to be watching anything even remotely sad, to be honest. So until I knew that I can survive and that I'm gonna be okay and until I was done with this difficult treatment, I couldn't possibly watch something that would make me sad. Finally, I watched it, the entire thing. I'm almost done with the manga as well. And I've prepared a fashion video for you, as you have requested. To be honest, talking about Nana is kind of like talking about Vivian Westwood. The two are interconnected to a ridiculous extent, and I don't mean that in a bad way. I think that Nana definitely fits the aesthetic of the Vivian Westwood brand, especially the punk era, obviously. Considering Nana Osaki's style, she's definitely into Vivian Westwood fashion. There's even a quote in the show that goes, Vivian Westwood, Sex Pistols, Seven Star Cigarettes, Coffee with Milk and Strawberry Cake, and Lotus Flower. That's the things that Nana likes and she never changes the things that she likes. So it's not a brand that was just an inspiration for all of the fashion in the show. It was definitely a brand that was featured multiple times and it was very dominant visually in the show and the manga. Aya Yazawa is the creator of Nana and uh, judging by her other work, it is clear that she's greatly influenced by fashion when it comes to her art and characterization of the cast. She did go to fashion school before pursuing manga creation, so you know, it makes a lot of sense. It seems that Nana is the only anime or manga that had Vivian Westwood pieces featured in them, at least from what I've seen, if I'm wrong, please correct me, but from what I've seen, it is a brand that was featured really heavily in Nana, but it's not something that Ayazawa is particularly obsessed with herself. It's not like she only featured those designs in her work or that she was only influenced by Vivian Westwood or punk fashion. In her other work like Paradise Kiss and some other ones, I don't remember the names, I've seen a bunch of different styles being featured. And of course, in Nana, you don't just get the punk fashion but because the main cast are punk rock artists it's just what you mostly see on screen so that's why it feels so predominant the fact that nana is the only anime or manga that feature vivian westwood when it comes to ai as i was work it's not a coincidence i don't think it is it makes a lot of sense because vivian westwood is definitely a queen of punk fashion especially when it comes to british punk movements. I don't know if she was specifically aiming at that in the 70s, at the end of 70s, when she ran a boutique with her partner. The boutique had multiple names, I think it was like three names or something like that, but it was selling the same types of things even when the name was changed, which was bondage clothes, like S&M clothes, pants with bum flaps. And the thing is, all those styles were kind of overlapping with a lot of interest of different subcultures. I wouldn't say that only punk youths <laughs> were interested in the designs. It had a bit more of a widespread appeal because of all of the styles being featured in different types of subcultures. By the way, the butt flap looked like this and it was basically used to reduce the wear and tear of pants, you know? Which is a great idea when you think about it. Just having like a piece of plastic hanging behind you, you could decorate it and stuff like that. Or a piece of some other material and it would reduce the wear and tear of your clothes. That's a good idea. 
So I've told you that she ran that boutique with her partner and her partner was the manager of Sex Pistols. Now, that's a very interesting tidbit because as we all know, Sex Pistols were a punk group. They're also a group that had Sid Vicious in it. Is it Vicious? Anyway, his name is Sid. And Sid and Nancy movie was kind of, um, was telling the story, a tragic story, I guess, of addiction and promising your love that you will follow them if they die you know, all the dramatic love stuff. Nana Osaki and Ren's relationship, they definitely had that vibe going on. The parallels are not like super subtle, to be honest. You can pick it up as soon as you watch the anime. You see a poster in Ren's apartment, the apartment that they lived in together, that literally said, Sid and Nancy love kills. And that's a moment where Nana asked Ren if he would die if she died or whatever. They're so dramatic, aren't they? Yeah, well. Sid was also the bassist of his group, as well as, I mean, in Trap Nest, he has a different position. By him, I mean Ren, but he started as a bassist. Ren even has the same hair. There's also a moment in the show where Nana literally says, hey, don't you think Ren looks like Sid from the Sex Pistols? If you want to see them without looking them up, this is what Sid looked like. And look at the goddamn lock chain on his neck. See? Basically, all of this explains very well why Vivian Westwood is such a heavily featured designer in this show. I have never seen a show use a logo or show a designer so much, it's one designer, in their work as this one. And I get it, I get it because it does fit them all. They are all in a punk band, they're all dressing in this type of fashion. Like it's not, none of this is surprising and it all makes sense, you know, it's all connected. <laughs> the Vivian Westwood choker became quite popular recently. There are many designs by Vivian Westwood in terms of um, accessories that are really great. And there are multiple pieces that the characters are wearing. There's also one that Shin is wearing. You see him wear this lighter, a Vivian Westwood lighter. And honestly, it looks really cute. I really want that lighter. I don't even smoke, but it makes me want to smoke because it's just so damn cool. When they're not literally wearing Vivian Westwood pieces, they're still wearing things that are inspired by Vivian Westwood because they use a lot of fabrics that are very popular or very beloved by Vivian. So let's start with specific characters, starting with Nana Osaki because she is probably the most well-known character from Nana. She's also the character that has the most Vivian Westwood pieces. She's also the character that is one of the most staple characters in terms of fashion. Uh, when we get to Hachi, it gets a little bit confusing because she does not have an eight, like a fashion identity as Nana Osaki does. She's definitely dressed in punk-inspired clothes. She also seems to be inspired a little bit by the new wave fashion, which was a little bit more flamboyant or a little bit more dramatic than punk fashion. It was adding a little bit of a glam touch to the pieces or to the outfits. Also a little bit of horror punk if we go into more specific punk categories. Because of all the incorporation of fishnet stockings and corsets, as well as the length of garments. So here's one of her outfits, right? She's wearing a Vivian Westwood corset, she's wearing a leather jacket, she's got this mini skirt on, and also fishnet stockings. Her style reminded me of Taylor Momsen. This is not to say that Nana is inspired by that because Taylor was dressing like this after Nana was created, obviously, and also both of them are pulling from the same inspirations. That's just the reason why I wanted to show Taylor's outfits because look at this. Doesn't it look like outfits that Nana would wear, right? I remember Taylor was so big on Tumblr in like 2014, remember? That was a that was a moment. She had her moment in, on Tumblr, that's for sure. Like there was like a gif of her smoking literally on every blog you would go to. So the inspirations in terms of fabrics definitely comes from Vivian's choices as well. When you look at Nana's clothes, there's sometimes some tartan inspirations, or not inspiration, but use of tartan. And Vivian used a lot of leopard prints, a lot of this specific shade of red, which is used in the love jacket, the one with the heart that Nana wears. I didn't, up, I don't think I put it here because it's one of those things that you will see anywhere on any page that talks about Nana. I didn't want to repeat too much of what is already, what has already been said, you know. Obviously, there's still going to be some overlap, but I tried to cut out the most boring parts. There's also this type of jacket that Vivian had in her collections multiple times actually. This jacket that um, had a fur trim. You see Nana wear that on one of the 
manga covers right here and Vivian had literally the same one right here in one of her collections so another piece that was literally Vivian Westwood piece I also think that this outfit that Nana wears in this image that it, it is inspired by Vivian's suits as well the the stripes the way that the tie is made and all the chain like the chain that kind of connects the vest and the jacket reminds me a lot of this outfit and I feel like it was definitely inspired by that of course we gotta talk about rocking horse shoes the ones that they wear in the manga it's a ballerina variant I believe I think it seems like they don't have as much fabric to tie around the leg so it seems like the fabric is shorter but technically speaking I think that it's the same type of shoe it just looks a little bit different like slightly there's also this outfit with the shoes that have a lot in common with these shoes from Vivian Westwood the only difference is obviously there's a little bit of a difference in the lacing it's actually this pair of shoes is really famous because Naomi Campbell fell in them when she was on the runway and like I don't blame her yet did you see how tall they are you could break your ankle in those things another piece that I found was this famous shirt that says God save the Queen it's definitely a reference to Sex Pistols as well, their song. And this shirt was very famous amongst the punks of the time. Nana wears it in the episode where both her and Hachi want to sign the same apartment. They want to lease the same apartment and they are kind of competing over it. And then they decide to live together. So she's wearing that exact shirt. Or at least it's the same pattern. I don't know if it's the exact same shirt, right? It's the same artwork on top of it. Another thing that you see a lot is this leopard jacket or leopard print on shirts and whatever that everyone from Blackstones wear at one point or another. Specifically, this jacket Nana wears on the cover of a, one of the manga releases. This is one of the Vivian Westwood jackets as well. The thing with the guys is that they also wear similar things as Nana, except they are not exact replicas of pieces from collections from Westwood. Sometimes they are very similar, but they're not exactly a replica. Still, he uses a lot of the same fabrics or the same patterns. So let's talk about Hachi. Hachi is a messy, messy gal. She is... Her indecisiveness is definitely her issue. Maybe not even indecisiveness, but thoughtlessness, I guess. She doesn't stick to one style when it comes to what she wears. She definitely tries to follow trends. She tries to wear things that fit the lifestyle that she's going for at the time. She is extremely influenced by people who she spends the most time with. She's one of those people that get really sucked into other people's lives and other people's aesthetics and other people's tastes. She wears this headscarf a lot at different points in the story. So I think that that's probably the most stable piece pieces that she wears. When she was spending more time with June, she started to wear more western artsy person outfits when she went to art school with her. So she was kind of adopting that personality. When she started to spend more time with Nana, even though she is not wearing punk clothes necessarily, she does wear a Vivian Westwood necklace when she goes to Blast show. And that's probably the highest point or the point where she was the closest to Nana in the story. The point where she was spending the most time with Nana and with the Blast members. And the moment Moment where it was probably the most important thing to her. I think that's why Ayazawa decided to give her Vivian Westwood piece at that point because she's definitely adapting the dreams and hopes of Nana. She starts wearing these housewife outfits when she gets with Takumi. She tries to appease him a lot. God, I hate Takumi so much. Oh my god. Ew. Anyway, she's hard to categorize. She's definitely she had this Kogal aesthetic when we just meet her in the in the past, I mean, when she's in high school. And then she kind of just goes into this style called Gal Mix, which is just girls kind of following the trends and what's the most popular kind of thing. Her sister, on the other hand, is definitely a Ganguru Gal. And those girls look like this, very tan, and their makeup was quite light, basically white. And I thought that was really interesting because at first when I saw her sister, I thought it was just an exaggeration. Like, I didn't think it was a style, like it was a widespread thing. Turns out it is. And turns out it wasn't a <laughs> an exaggeration at all. It actually is a style where they were getting very, 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 very tan and wearing really light makeup, especially eyeshadow and lipstick. And apparently that style was the most popular in Shibuya, which again makes sense because when 
her sister comes to visit her, but that's in the manga, that's after the end of anime. She comes to visit her and immediately she goes, oh, I want to see Shibuya, you know. Now June, at first she's shown with straight hair and then after that she's shown with what I assume is her natural hair. I'm not entirely sure. Some sources say that she is mixed race, so maybe that is her natural hair. She's definitely dressed as North American art school student. Her and Kioski, Kioski, that's the name of her boyfriend. I think both of them are very much inspired by the Western fashion. Whether it is appropriation or not is up to debate just because there is information that she is mixed, maybe he is too. But I'm not entirely sure. I'm not going to say that it is or it isn't appropriation. I lean towards it is, but I wouldn't know. <laughs> We also get Sachiko, which I want to complain about her because I don't think she's the worst person ever or something like that. No, I don't. I don't like Shoji a lot, but Sachiko is fine. The issue that I have with her is that she looks like a 12-year-old boy and she dresses like one as well. That is a part that made me feel extremely uncomfortable, especially with Shoji showing so much attraction to her. The fact that it was her looks that were really attractive to him. Like, I feel like Hachi is the most childish you could look as an adult without the partner that's attracted to you being weird. Sachiko is just like, just such a kid to, to the point where I was very uncomfortable <laughs> looking at her. But that might be just me, you know, who knows. Her style is not that interesting, it's just very 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 childish now my or misato as we know her in the anime before we find out that she has a different name she's definitely someone who wears lolita outfits or at least she's inspired by them i was kind of confused as to what subtype she was because i could not figure out for the life of me what she was wearing exactly and i asked a friend of mine who knows Lolita fashion, what kind of Lolita she is, and this is what she said verbatim. She said she's a mix between casual and old school. Her dresses aren't the typical classic or sweet Lolita. Obviously, they are less complicated, which is true. That's why I couldn't place them anywhere because they weren't um, as intricate. They were kind of simplified to be a little bit more, I guess, easier to wear in day-to-day -day life. She says, but her headdress and hair are like an old school Lolita type. But obviously, they are mixing some punk elements in her outfits like Vivian's shoes and plaid skirt. That's what a Misato is, or Mai is. If you are into Lolita fashion, let me know what you think, what you think her subtype of Lolita fashion is, because I don't know. All I know is what my friend told me, because I am clueless when it comes to Lolita. Not as clueless as I used to be, but still. In any case, all the other clothes that are in the show, they're mostly punk inspired and especially inspired by what Vivian Westwood was selling in her boutique before she became like a brand. Also, the thing is, I want to keep on talking about this show, but from a perspective of characters, plot, style, in terms of, um, you know, the drawing style or framing decisions and whatever, I'm going to continue in the podcast. So leave me your opinions, your takes. They can be hot or cold, I don't care. I would especially love opinions about side characters, opinions that are based on something specific because I really want to hear, you know, interesting takes on things that maybe are not talked about as much. And we'll talk about it in the next podcast. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Bye!